This video is brought to you by PHP Storm. As a practitioner of test-driven development, I'm always looking for different ways to write test code faster. Sometimes this comes as little things like learning a faster way to run my tests using the built-in editor settings, but sometimes it's a whole new way to write tests. In this video, we're going to talk about the PEST testing framework, including how to install it, how to configure it, and run through some examples of how to use it. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you're subscribed so you can get our latest videos when they're published. To start out, PEST is a testing framework for PHP, and according to their website, it's built with a focus on simplicity, meticulously designed to bring back the joy of testing in PHP. And it's hard to disagree with that statement. PEST tests are easy to read and understand because the code syntax closely resembles natural language. PEST is built on top of PHP unit, but it adds a lot of nice improvements inspired by Ruby's JSpec and Jest libraries to make it a completely different experience. Part of that is the way it changes the structure of the tests, so they're built using a series of anonymous functions that force us to make tests that are easier to read, and part of it is the command line options and how nice the output display is. Now you may be wondering why we should be using PEST. And at a high level, PEST provides a fluent interface for writing automated tests with the use of its expectations API, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And it has a nice interface for seeing the output of our test results, including concise error messages and easy to read stack traces, which will make debugging fast and effortless. It also includes some beneficial additional features, such as parallel testing, coverage checks, watch mode, architectural testing, native profiling tools, and the snapshot testing tool. Because it's built on top of PHP unit, we don't need to rewrite all of our PHP unit tests for PEST immediately, and can instead use PEST to run our existing PHP unit-based tests automatically. There are also migration tools that will allow us to migrate our tests, but I haven't tried any of them, so I can't vouch for the results. We do need to replace all of our calls to the PHP unit command line with the PEST command, as PEST prevents PHP unit from running. As with most modern packages, installation is done using Composer. Then we also need to initialize PEST using the dash dash init switch. This will create several files, including some example tests, the pest.php configuration file that's used by PEST, and a PHP unit.xml configuration file that's used by PHP unit if we don't already have it. There's also a wide variety of plugins or extensions for our IDE. It's not required, and for the remainder of this video, I'll be using the command line, but I highly recommend installing a plugin for your IDE to speed up your development flow. Nothing beats the speed of bringing a single test or a file using a keyboard shortcut. We'll discuss more about PEST after this word from our sponsors. PHP Storm is a cutting edge IDE tailored specifically for PHP and web developers. If you haven't used it before, or it's been a while since you last tried it, now is the perfect time to check it out. PHP Storm has recently received significant performance enhancements and has an ever-expanding feature set. Now, I'm a recent convert to PHP Storm and I love it. One of my favorite features is the ability to rename a class and have PHP Storm find all the references and just automatically fix them for us. Curious to see if it's the right fit for you? Head to jetbrains.com slash phpstorm to learn more and try it out with a free 30-day trial. Code smarter, not harder. Test file structure for our test puts all of the test files inside of a test directory at the root of our project. In its default configuration, it creates a unit directory for any tests that interact with a single file and a feature directory that interacts with a set of classes together, like a controller would do. Files need to end in the word test for PEST to auto load them and run the tests inside the file. We can also put test files inside of directories. I like to set it up so we have a test file that tests common conditions. For example, I might have a user directory with an administrator test file for tests that are all based on the administrator role in my application. Let's open the tests unit example test.php and take a look at what we have so far. The test function is where we create our tests and it accepts two parameters. The first is a string to indicate what we're testing, and the second is an anonymous function that's the actual test logic. Inside that function, we have a very basic set of function calls that uses PEST's expectation API to perform the tests. 
I'm going to quickly alter the test so we can see how it works. I'm just going to give the test a better name to indicate what we're testing and change to be true to to be false. Now we can run the test at the command line using the following command. When we run this command, we'll get a failing test, which is kind of what we expect because we're expecting true to be false, which is not true. This is what you'll see when you make a change that causes your test to fail. I love how it's showing the name of the test and exactly where it's failing. Let's fix it so it passes. Then we can run it again and see it pass. Notice how it shows which tests have passed and we get that nice check mark for the ones that do. In our example, we used PEST's expectation API to perform expectations on our values. The expect function is the core part of the expectation API and is used to assert that certain conditions have been met. The expectation API creates a fluent interface that allows us to concisely and easily test our code and explain exactly what it is we're expecting to see out of our tests. For example, in our previous example, we used expect false to be true to ensure that our value in the test is false. PEST's expectation API provides a variety of other functions that you can use to test the behavior of your code, such as to be, to test any value, to be true, and to contain. We can do something like the following with the expectation API to test that a value is an integer and 42. To add additional levels of checks, we can also assert things that are not, such as not a string. Now, because PEST is built on top of PHP, the expectation API is not the only option. We can also use PHP Unit's assertion API, which can be extremely useful if you're already familiar with PHP Unit or if you need to perform more complicated assertions than what are available using the expectation API. Because we're running the test with PEST, we still get that nice output. If you're not aware of how to use PHP Unit's assertion API, you can find the full documentation on PHP Unit's website. Now we've only touched on the basics of PEST in this video, as it is a getting started video, but we wanted to at least mention several features that will make your life so much easier. These include being able to run the tests in parallel for faster test run, data sets for running the same test with different data, native profiling tools to optimize slow running tests, out of the box architectural testing to test the application rules like making sure we don't commit code with var dumps are done, coverage reports directly at the terminal to track code coverage, and plugins such as watch mode and snapshot testing to improve PEST even more. Now, as a conclusion, PEST is a testing framework built on top of PHP Unit. It uses the expectation API to create a fluent interface for testing. It provides a lot of features to help speed up the test development. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Have you tried using the PEST testing framework on your own project? Let me know how it worked in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter and phpc.social at Scott Keck Warren. It always brightens my day when I hear from a fan and I would love to know that I'm helping you. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.